we are making steak au pois. Now, steak au pois is a French dish, and it's kind of how the French do spicy food. The French are known for their subtle flavors and copious uses of butter and fat. Well, this one kind of slid underneath the radar. This is a spicy dish, but they, obviously they don't use chilies, jalapenos, all these other ways we make things spicy. They use the humble peppercorn. Today we're gonna use black and green peppercorns in this sauce, and I'm gonna show you the difference. If you love spicy food, you're going to love this dish. I wanna thank Thermapro for sponsoring this video. I have been using the Lightning Instant Read Thermometer, and it is amazing, super quick, and it takes all the guesswork out of cooking your steak. You put it in, boom, you got the temperature. You know exactly what's going on inside of your steak. So here we have our whole beef tenderloin. You can get them at Costco, you can get them at Sam's, the chef store. I have a whole video on how to break this down in detail on my channel. I'm gonna link it in the description. The description of my videos are kind of like a choose your own adventure for those of you who remember those books. You can find the products, you can find the older videos, anything that's gonna to relate to this project, I'm gonna put in that description, so check it out. This is our whole beef tenderloin. First thing, I'm gonna go through this rather quickly, but again, we wanna get this center portion right here. This center portion is what we're aiming for, and that's what I wanna use in the recipe today. The tail and the head cut, all those other cuts will get used for another purpose, but today I'm focusing on those set, that center cut. First thing I wanna do is remove this side muscle, okay? It's called the chain. I'm just gonna separate it with my fingers and then help it out with my knife. Take the whole thing, that goes in our scrap pile. We're gonna end up grinding that. That chain was, is great for burgers. So we're gonna see if there's anything else that needs to be peeled off. Some of this sinew and fat needs to get peeled off. Now, this is inedible. Some of it's edible, but like this stuff right here, as I just described in the other video, if it's stretchy like this and not a hard fat, it needs to go in the trash. Now we're just gonna start cleaning stuff up. So anytime we see a big chunk of fat, we're just gonna clean it up. Flip it over, any big chunks of fat, we're just gonna slide out. I like to keep these light, nice and lean. The whole reason we have beef tenderloins is because it's lean, so let's just go ahead and take out some of this fat here. Again, it can all be ground, we can put it in our grind, it's great. That's how butcher shops make a ton of money, just from their ground beef. All right, so now we're gonna flip it around. We're gonna just cut this silver skin off. This is one of the more technical parts. We're gonna take the back of the knife. We're gonna take out that fat that's on top of the silver skin. All right, so we're gonna get underneath this, the silver skin, we're gonna get underneath and just kind of wiggle our knife a little bit, and it's gonna come out the other end, come out that end. We're gonna use it as a handle, get a good grip on it. You're gonna slightly rotate the blade up so that you can get underneath the silver skin without cutting it. One of my first jobs in the restaurant industry was working at a steakhouse, a prime steakhouse, and I was real lucky. I got that job when I was, I don't know, 18 years old, 17 years old. I would come in early to watch the guy who breaks down all the tenderloins for that night. I would come in early to watch him, and then they eventually let me do some, and then I just learned how to do it. It was a very cool experience. So for this dish, I'm gonna do a whole roast here right in the middle, and this is the most consistent size. So for here, we're just gonna start right here, and then let's go right here where it starts to taper down. Again, this will be a good portion of the tenderloin, and then we're gonna be able to roast the whole thing, slice it up, it's gonna be delicious. We can still get a couple steaks out of this and the head cut, but that's for another video. Let's move on to for our steak au pois recipe. With pepper being the star of this show, we are going to crack our black pepper by hand fresh. You can use a pepper grinder, but they don't get it chunky enough. So again, I'm gonna show you this cool trick that you're gonna take your black peppercorns and you're gonna put them out on your cutting board. And then you're gonna take either the bottom, uh, or you're gonna take a pot or a saute pan. You wanna make sure you get this all the way evenly distributed and you're gonna take it and push down on those peppercorns as they crack. You might send a few flying, but you know, it's a price you gotta pay. 
Again, and as we see, it's, it's cracked black pepper. It's not ground black pepper, it's cracked black pepper. We're gonna go through one more time. Make sure you clean your saute pan afterward at the bottom of it so that when you make eggs the next morning, you don't like light up the whole house with pepper fumes. Fresh cracked black pepper makes all the difference in this dish. I'm gonna take off one of my gloves so I can salt it. So I don't contaminate all my salt, but again, we are just trying to get as much flavor in here as possible. So we're gonna, a lot of, lot of, lot of salt. Don't forget the cut ends here. We're gonna completely coat this thing in salt and pepper. You wanna use a lot because again, you're gonna get a slice like this. So the only part that's gonna have seasoning is this outer edge. This interior is not gonna have any seasoning. So you have to almost over season it so that it, everything gets the right amount. So we're just gonna roll it. Roll it in the thing, cover it with the pepper. As you saute it and get a crust on it, it's going to toast those peppercorns. And I'm gonna show you how to do it so you don't burn it, but it's gonna toast those peppercorns and really increase the flavor. Man, I'm making a mess, but that looks delicious. Let's take some precautionary steps. If you watch all my videos before, you know when I saute a steak inside that my smoke detector does not like me. I just have to do anything I can to make sure that smoke gets out of the house. Oh, look at that. Is that Glory? There's my sous chef. She hates it when I film a video. I think I'm being too loud and she hates it. All right, here we go. Neutral oil. Got my pan pretty hot. You don't need it smoking hot. You just need it like hot enough to sear, but not hot enough to like start to smoke the oil. We don't want to burn the pepper. So we're just going to get nice sizzle. That's perfect. This is a big thick cut of meat. So I'm not worried about overcooking at this stage. I'm just worried about not burning the pepper. Starting to smoke a little bit. So I'm just going to turn on the heat a little bit. I would say about one minute per side. I know this is round. We're going to pretend it's square so i'm just going to go one minute on each side to really get that sear in and make sure we don't forget to get the sides the cut sides just hold it up for a second just so you can get all sides crispy and delicious All right, now that it's done searing, we are going to put it in a 400 degree oven. Again, I'm looking for an internal temperature of about 115. After we pull it out of the oven at 115 and let it rest, it'll be in that 130 to 135 range that we want for medium rare. We're gonna check it about in about seven minutes and we're gonna see what the internal temperature is. And then we'll go from there. It's been about seven minutes. We're gonna use a ThermPro Lightning thermometer. This is one of my favorite parts, this is so cool. To turn it on, you just pull the probe out and it automatically just turns on. I don't know why I think that's so cool, but look at that, that's cool. All right, so we're gonna take our first temperature, seven minutes in. Yeah, the internal temperature, it's only 71 degrees. We're gonna put in the thickest part. Let's try it again in five more minutes. The more you do this, the more that you get a feel for it. But if you're uncomfortable with it, let's go ahead and tempt this thing every five minutes, just so we can make sure we don't waste this beautiful beef tenderloin that we got going on. So let's talk about carryover cooking and when, to, when your steak or when your meat is done. I like my steak about the, the rarer side of medium rare. So if medium rare is 135 degrees, I wanna pull the meat I wanna pull it about 10 degrees before it reaches 135. What happens is when you temp, when you go ahead and temp that meat, it is still cooking as you put it on the counter. It's called carryover cooking. There is heat in the center that's trying to get out. It radiates towards the edges and, and can overcook your meat. So if you like medium rare and it's 135 degrees, don't pull it at 135 degrees, pull it before, pull it 10 degrees before. I'm gonna put a graphic on the screen that's gonna show you what the recommended temperatures are for each degree of doneness. Another tip is just to pull it before you think it's ready. 
As I learned when I worked in a steakhouse, you can always cook things more, you can't cook things less. In my estimation, pull that meat just even a little bit sooner than you think it's ready. I think you're gonna be happy with it. It has been about 15 minutes total, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a temp. So I'm gonna use my ThermoPro thermometer. Another cool feature about this is that no matter which way you turn it, the numbers are always the right way. It's kind of cool. We're about 114, 115 deep in the center. We're gonna go ahead and pull it. Again, it's maybe a little bit early. I'd rather have it too rare than too done. And we're gonna let it rest and we're gonna make our pan sauce. Now for our pan sauce. So we have in here, we have the residual pepper, black peppercorns that just came off of roasting the filet. I'm gonna take a paper towel real quick and just try to get some of this oil that's around the edge. Just again, we're gonna take it, we don't, you don't want so much oil in there because we're gonna add more, we're gonna add different fats later. As that's heating up, again, all of these measurements are approximate. So again, do what you feel. If you like it spicier, make it spicier. So these are green peppercorns. Okay, these are green peppercorns. I got them from Amazon. I'll show a link in the description, but they are brined. So you're just gonna put a few of those in there. Those green peppercorns are very fragrant. And the cool thing about them is they're brined, so they're kind of squishy. I don't know if you can see this, but like you can squish it in your hand. Look at that. So they don't, they're not as harsh as black peppercorns. It's just a different ripeness of this peppercorn berry, basically. So again, just gives it a little more depth of flavor. We got black peppercorns and we got green peppercorns. Let those go for a minute or two, and then we're gonna add a little bit of brandy. Now, this is a very classic way to do this dish. Now, whenever you add this to your, to the heat, understand that the flame has nothing to do with the cooking off of the alcohol. So, if it flames up, if it doesn't flame up, it doesn't really matter. This dish actually used to be like a table side dish. People would do this table side. So you'd want the, oh, you gotta have the flame, you know? But if it doesn't flame up, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. But if you wanna impress people, woo, look at that flame. Let that reduce. That reduce to cook out some of the alcohol. And then as it, as it continues to boil, the alcohol is going to burn off. So it's not, a, it's not a huge deal. And there goes the fire alarm. Ooh, I told you it was going to go off. All right, we're going to add a little bit of beef broth, and then I'm going to go tend to this fire alarm business. You can't even have a little fire in your house without the fire alarm. What's up with that? For all the fire alarm companies out there, I know you watch my channel religiously. Can we please make a cooking setting for the fire alarm where I can push a button and it says, hey, no need to worry, I'm just cooking, thanks. We're gonna let this reduce, oh, by about, I would say a third. This, we're just using a, you know, a Swanson, just kind of boxed beef broth right now. If I was going to the trouble to make my own beef stock, I would let it reduce down more, but we're gonna thicken this with a cornstarch slurry, so. It doesn't need to reduce too heavily. To my two tablespoons of cornstarch, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of water to make a really thick paste, and it's gonna go ahead and thicken that sauce. But we're just gonna throw in this, slowly incorporate this cornstarch slurry into it. Whisking. And you're just gonna kinda of put it a little bit in, let it come to a boil, and then see how thick it is. We're also gonna add heavy cream next, so that's gonna thicken up also a little bit. So. You don't want it too super thick. This is what we're looking for. It's like, I would say halfway there. But again, we're gonna add a little bit of heavy cream and then it's gonna get all the way there. A couple tablespoons of heavy cream. This is a French dish, by the way. Gotta put a little cream in there. You want like a light tan for this sauce. It's a cream sauce. So it's a creamy, beefy, peppery sauce. We'll let that reduce. So here's your French word of the day when we're doing French cooking. So when you get a sauce consistency that it coats the back of a spoon, that is called nappe. At this point, we're going to add, where our sauce is done, we're gonna turn off the heat. We'll add some salt. 
Definitely needs everything. Needs a little bit of salt. And then we're gonna go, let's go slice up this beef and finish our dish. Our beef has had a chance to rest while we made their sauce. And now we're gonna slice it up. We're gonna put it on a nice platter, cover it with sauce. Let's do this. Let's give it a good slice here. I'm using this meat slicer right here so you don't have to really saw too much of the meat. You can just go back and forth in nice long strokes. Look how pretty this looks. Again, this is a different way to do it. Usually they're done individually, but I think we'd do this for a party. We'd do this for a, like just the main dish. So we're just gonna do slices of this nice beef tone that we cooked today. Check out the medium rare on that one. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is beautiful. We're gonna fan it out on the plate here. We're gonna add our delicious peppercorn sauce right over the top. If you like this recipe, check out the description for more recipes and more procedures and more tutorials. See you on the next one.